Hello there. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get the maximum benefit out of your membership in the community that you just joined. But quick, uh, a little bit of quick information about communities. So communities are congregations of lots of different kinds of people. And generally speaking, communities can be broken into a variety of different types. Now, I'm going to start this off by giving you some examples of different business models that might be good business models for communities. The first one is a speaker's bureau. In this case, you have or, you know, organizations or people, businesses such as venues, businesses, and organizations that are seeking speakers for some sort of an event or some purpose that they have, typically an event of some sort. So they might be looking for motivational speakers or sales training coaches or lifestyle coaches or you know, any number of different things. But generally speaking, you have two types of members in this type of community. You have speakers and then the people that are looking for speakers. And you can think of the speakers as vendor members and the other members as standard members. So when a member needs to find a speaker, they come into the community and request a quote from a speaker that is an expert on the topic that they're wanting to hear about. The community makes money when the speaker purchases a lead to unlock the contact information from somebody who has requested a quote. That's one example of a business model for a community. Another example of a business model for a community would be maybe an online language school. Here you would have students that are seeking some sort of language instruction. It might be Japanese or Spanish or German or what have you. Uh, in this case, the vendor members would be the uh, teachers and the standard members would be the students. So um, a student would come into the community, would type uh, something like Sp Spanish language lessons or Spanish teacher, and the uh, community would then be able to um, make money when the, um, the teacher unlocks the lead that comes in. Or the community might also charge a fee to the teachers, even just to be listed and have the opportunity to get leads. Here's another example of a community. This might be a charitable organization or a faith-based organization. But in this scenario, you have the members of the organization, and they're members because they have a connection to the organization. If it's a maybe a large Christian church or some other faith-based faith organization, or maybe it's a, a large uh, charitable organization. The members want to support the community and they want to support the, um, the organization. They, they'd like to support the community members. And so in this scenario, vendors like auto repair companies, landscapers, plumbers, and so on, they would be the vendor members and the members of the organization would be the standard members. And so this would be a great fundraising tool for a faith-based organization or a nonprofit because when somebody needs a home painter or a carpet cleaner, they could go into the community and create a, a quote request. And then uh, when the vendor unlocks the quote, they purchase a lead and unlock the quote so they can contact the person making the request. The, um, the community gets two things. Number one is the community organizer gets a portion of a, of a lead fee uh, to help support the community and do fundraising for the community. And then the members of the community get the benefit of knowing that they've uh, supported other members that have um, interest in supporting the same community. So with those thoughts in mind, let's talk a little bit more about the types of members that there are. There are standard members and vendor members. Standard members are... Um, Basically, all members have to start off as standard members. Some members can also be com uh, vendor members. The community manager has the ability to require approval before allowing a member, a standard member, to become a vendor member. Approval can be automated if all of the vendors who apply for vendor membership status are automatically approved by the community manager. In other words, if there's no um, qualification or criteria that have to be met. However, if the community manager wants to impose some sort of qualifications or restrictions for vendor membership, then they're going to have to go through a manual approval process, 
And those qualifications could be some sort of a vetting process, or they could be just as simple as requiring that a, a monthly or an annual fee be paid to be included as a vendor, vendor member. Um, vendor members are included in the RFQ process for the community. And when a quote request is initiated, only the vendors who are members of that community uh, can get that quote. Now, there are two types of vendor members. There are service providers and there are product sellers. Service providers should use the uh, red button that says list the services you offer or um, the other button when you first log in that says I, I, am, I sell services. And um, that button will allow them to list their services in the system and will also allow them to add and even update their company information. Listing and providing, creating a profile of your business as a service provider is very easy and quick, and you can get set up quickly to start receiving leads. If you sell products, products are a little bit more complicated and take a little bit more time. You can use the system to sell products, um, but you do have to utilize the uh, built-in shopping cart to be able to put those products into the system so that they can then be sold um, to people as um, in, on the community uh, marketplace. So if you sell products, please activate the shopping cart module in your dashboard, watch the videos, and then if you need help, reach out to Apricot Rocket. Okay, so for service providers, you're allowed to list up to five services that you pro provide. Um, and you do that, again, by clicking on the button that says list the services you offer. And then follow the sequence of screens that will show you exactly what to do. Now, remember, when somebody uses the RFQ engine to look for you, they're going to start typing words that they think will describe you. As they search as they type their search words into the RFQ engine, it will start displaying potential matches both from you as well as from other vendors. So the more services that you list that are potential matches, the more leads you will be likely to receive. Okay, so when you first log in, you're going to see um, a button on a pop-up, and that button is going to say, I sell services. Click there. Now, if you click off and that pop-up goes away, underneath you're going to see a, another red button in the community that says list the services you offer. Uh, you can click either one of those and that'll bring you to a pop-up screen that looks like this. You list the services the same way that you would expect your audience to search for you on Google. So, for example, speaking topics or presentation titles might be considered services if you're a... Um, if you're a, um, a speaker in a speaker's bureau. So if somebody needed to find a speaker on the topic of sales improvement, they might type any of the following. Sales improvement, sales motivation, improving sales, motivating salespeople, sales training, uh, motivating speak, um, motivational speaking. I mean, there's a lot of different things they could type. So all of those things might be of interest to you. Now, the important thing to also know though is you're limited to six free listings. If you want to list more than six, you can. Each additional listing has a cost of 1,000 tokens and you earned 1,000 tokens when you created your account. You can easily earn more tokens by uh, a variety of things. If you go to your dashboard and look for a, um, a button that says activate rocket tokens, uh, you should do that and then watch that video and uh, you'll learn a lot more about how you can earn tokens. And, and I would recommend that you do that. So as you go through the process, when you when you list five, to, uh, five services, you'll see them showing up in the entered categories today. And then uh, you'll, but when you do your sixth one, a, a pink screen, a pink little box, alert box will pop up that says, sorry, you can't list anymore, but click here to list more services. So that's where you would go to um, list additional services for the 1,000 tokens per uh, additional service. Now, um, you're also going to want to click on the Add Update Company Info button that you'll see down below because even though you may have listed your services, we don't know and nobody will know anything about your company. So when you click on that, you're actually going to have the ability to start adding information about your company. And 
uh, it's all the standard information, company name, contact name, uh, address, phone number, uh, all that kind of stuff, web, website address, as well as a logo graphic. You know, you need to put in all of the information, but the logo is not required. Everything else is required. When you click the Save button, it'll automatically be saved into your uh, business profile in the system. You will be able to edit that and make changes. There are other videos that show you how to do that. If you click on the Add Update uh, Company Info button again, it might look like this, which will still have the same information that we typed in, but I uploaded a company logo. In this case, it's just a soccer ball that uh, has nice graphics on it. But you'll be able to see and edit your information from the community pages at any time. Now, once you've gone through those steps, you're done listing your company information and your services in the system. And here's the really great news. You can go out and join as many communities as you'd like, and you don't ever have to list your business profile information again. You've already done it. So by simply going and joining other communities, you're going to be able to expose your business to lots of potential customers. Some of those communities automatically approve vendor members. Some of them will require some sort of approval process. Uh, that's up to you whether you decide to do that. But here's how you go join communities. Um, when you're on your dashboard, look for the top row of panels that says communities in the left column, and there's a link that says communities seeking members. Click there. When you get on that page, you're going to see a whole page of communities that are seeking members. Some of them even offer tokens as a signing bonus. Um, all you have to do is, is scroll down. You can do searches based upon cities and zip codes and stuff like that to find specific communities. But uh, if you just scroll down and start joining communities, this is a great way for you to potentially expand your, uh, your marketing to, new, uh, to a new audience. Okay. Now let's talk about the quote process. So the way the quote process works is this. People that are standard members, and they can also be vendor members, but any member can uh, go and uh, click on a link that says request a quote. Now that link might be different in some communities because the community owner has the ability to edit the link. But basically it's going to be where you go to request a quote. And then what will happen is the quote information will be sent to the vendors that are uh, the vendors that offer the service uh, that you're looking for. So a requester, well, let's say the requester needs somebody to help with sales training. So they, they type the word or they search for sales training. The RFQ will be sent to all of the vendors that have listed sales training as a service that they offer. Now, in this example, we're going to presume that there's only four vendors in this particular community that uh, match that service. And the way the system works is if you're requesting a quote from a community, only vendors in that community will be able to uh, respond to the quote, will even get the quote. Okay, so here's what the process looks like. The, the requester creates a quote request, an RFQ, uh, which is then sent to the vendor who receives that along with a profile of the requester. Uh, the vendor can then review the quote and the profile and decide whether they want to purchase uh, and unlock the lead. The profile information does not include any contact or identification information. If the vendor wants to purchase that lead, they do so, and then the lead is unlocked, and the vendor can see the contact information. The requester contact information is also automatically added to the database, the CRM database, of the vendor. Now, the vendor then can respond with either an email or a simple phone call to the requester to deal with the quote. At the end of these processes, the vendor can provide feedback on the requester and the requester can provide feedback on the vendor. So, in a little bit more detail, um, the request a quote process works like this. Um, there's five questions that the requester is asked to fill out. And those questions are, how often will the service be needed? How soon will it be needed? And is this for a business individual or some other type of entity? Describe the service that you need. And then what price do you expect to pay for the service? That's, um, that's the information. So here's what the screens look like. 
uh, when a member visits the community and clicks on the request a quote button, they get this pop-up. And this screen is where they start typing the words that they would use um, to find the services that are offered by community ven vendors. You'll see on this screen that I'm typing the word sales. And down in the blue space below, the system so starts displaying some potential matches. So um, matches are shown, in a, and it'll reduce as, as you type. Um, but in this case, it, just with the word sales, it shows improving sales, motivating sales. So see, sales doesn't have to be on the front. Uh, sales improvement, sales motivation, sales training. So I'm looking for sales training, and I click on the sales training uh, link in the blue space down below. And that takes me to this pop-up screen. And here uh, it says that I'm looking for a sales trainer, and it gives me a, a series of radio button options that I can click for how often will I need this service. So I choose one, and when I choose and I click the save answer, I move on to the next answer, and I earn 200 tokens for each answer. So the next answer, the next question is when do you need the service? So you answer that one, and then you move on, and it wants to know is a service for a business, an individual, or some other you know, type of entity. And then finally, or not finally, but next it asks for a description of the service. So you type in a description and be as detailed as you possibly can. And then last, it asks what you're expecting to pay for this service. And uh, there's a variety of reasons for that, but uh, that's that's just the process. And I'll, I'll explain that in more detail in another, uh, another video. Okay, so once the person requesting the service has gone through those steps, the vendor is going to receive the RFQ and profile information by uh, email or SMS, or they can get the information by simply logging into their account. So the email will have a link to a page, the SMS message will have a link to a page, and either one of those, if you click on it, it'll take you to um, a page where you can see the quote details and um, a profile the profile information of the person requesting the quote. When you log into your account and look at the um, uh, the quote, it'll basically look like this. So you log into your account, which is the menu on the far left side, and uh, you'll go down to the section that says Leads Program, and you click there, and then the Leads Program menu will open, and you'll see a section that says All Leads. And then when you go into the All Leads section, you'll see the quote that just came in, uh, typically at the top, and uh, in this case, it's sales training. So if you click on sales training, it'll actually take you to the lead detail page. On the lead detail page, you'll see the, uh, the lead information in the left-hand column. In the center column, you'll see the profile information of the person requesting the lead. And in the right-hand column, there'll be a button where you can purchase the lead. Now, in the center column, the contact information for the person requesting the lead is not being displayed until you purchase the lead. So when you per click on the purchase button, um, this pop-up screen will come up that will, um, you have to click on pay by uh, pay with card. This is going to be through Stripe, the credit card processor. And then another overlay will come up where you actually input your email and your, um, your card payment information. When you do that, the payment will be processed and then you'll be immediately taking back, taken back to the lead detail page, and I've expanded it here, where you'll be able to see the contact information that has been unlocked, as well as you'll have a feedback form that you can use when you've finished um, with the feedback, or when you've finished with the uh, process. Now, you may immediately be able to get in touch with a person, or it may take a little time, um, but we, we do request that you come back and provide feedback, uh, because we want to be able to rank and rate uh, individuals that request quotes to make sure that um, uh, you and future vendors have the ability to see whether or not they're people of integrity. Okay, so um, when the uh, person, uh, when you unlock their contact information, a couple of things happen. First, uh, the information is sent to your CRM, so you have a permanent record there, but you also have a permanent record within the leads program area where you can go back to that menu section and look for purchase leads, and you'll see a list of the leads that you've purchased and when you bought them, and then you can um, go back in and get the lead details there. 
Um, that's it. The quote process is pretty simple. Once you've gotten the contact information, then you simply uh, either send a, an email with your quote to the person or give them a call. If you, if you need additional information to actually prepare the quote, feel free to give them a call. Uh, and be sure to provide feedback on the buyer, um, uh, which is the lead. Uh, and remember that buyers rate sellers. That's They rate you as well as you get a chance to rate them. It's, you know, feedback is important, so we sure encourage you to do that. Um, okay, so go go get listed and and um, um, enjoy the process and um, look forward to getting a bunch of leads. Thank you for watching this video.